We are joined by Chris Beard. My guy, I'm not going to even act like I'm not excited to have this conversation, nor am I going to act like I'm not pumped up for you. I'm not going to be all objective and bleep. What's going on, dude? How are you and how have the last couple of weeks been for you, Chris? Jim, great to be on. Uh, last couple of weeks have been crazy. I, I keep asking what day it is, um, but it's been a lot of fun and we're excited for this next challenge. All right, so let's talk about that next challenge. You had an awesome thing going at Texas Tech. I know because I saw it firsthand. I was there. I saw how much you loved being there. So what was your reaction when you first got word that Texas wanted to have a conversation with you? Uh, first reaction, um, didn't think that was going to happen. You know, Shock and I are friends, and um, we had just competed against those guys a few days earlier in the uh, Big 12 tournament. Um, but in college basketball, you expect the unexpected. Um, and so I was, I was happy for my friend Shaka uh, that he got an opportunity um, that he was excited about. So this still moved fast here. Um, but first first reaction was uh, thinking more about Shaka than myself. Talking to Chris Beard, you know, I had a conversation with him recently, too, and he's in a really good spot as well. The story goes, Chris, that you and the AD, Chris Del Conte, met at a Comfort Inn, and then you grabbed a couple of Egg McMuffins, and then you continued the conversation. What was that conversation like? Man, and how good do those Egg McMuffins taste? Yeah, so Plainview uh, is a great city in West Texas. My boss, CDC, um, I think had never been to Plainview before, so... He just got kind of a one-route idea, you know, hotel to McDonald's. Um, Jim, you know my background. I mean, I, you know, if there's anything wrong with McDonald's, I don't know about it. Uh, the drive through was efficient. The coffee was on point. Um, and anybody that tells you they don't like an Egg McMuffin is not telling you the truth. I mean, who doesn't like an Egg McMuffin? That, that's, uh, I feel strongly about that. I don't care what neighborhood you're from, um, what age bracket you're in. If you're not down with the Egg McMuffin, you're not a truth teller. You know, it's, if you're not down with the Egg McMuffin, you are not a truth teller. And as you're telling that story, Chris, literally my EP, Adam Hawk, said, and I quote, this is the greatest take in the history of the jungle. Now, the guy's only <laughs> been here five years, but that's still a very strong statement from my producer. And I happen to agree with you. If you've got a problem with that, you've got a problem with you. Now, Chris, you are a UT alum. You worked under my guy Tom Penders back in the day. What's it mean to be back home as the head coach and leading this program? Has that sunk in? And can you put that in words? It's in the process of sinking in. You know, like I, I've always been a guy that tries to live where my feet are is the, is the vocabulary that we tell our players. Um, like, look, the game's tomorrow, but we can't think about that. We're right here right now. It's practice time. Let's live where our feet are. So um, try to practice, you know, what I preach in that regard. Um, but, you know, being back, um, walking around campus, reconnecting with some people here, this is where my coaching journey started, you know, uh, with Coach Penders and EO and Vic and those guys, you know, gave me an opportunity at a young age to be around college basketball. Um, so, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I didn't tell you that it, it has been memory lane. Um, sometimes I got to slap myself a little bit and get back on the phone recruiting because uh, this, memory, this memory lane's cool, uh, but, but coaching really good players at Texas and making Final Fours is a little bit cooler. Yep. I'm going to ask you about that in one minute, Chris. I want to ask you about Lubbock and Texas Tech one more time. Like, for instance, whenever guys leave positions, they always seem to say the right thing and they thank the right people. Listen, again, I, I saw it. I saw you there. I saw how much you loved it there. I saw the blood, sweat, and tears that you put in there. I saw the commitment they made to you. How difficult was it to say goodbye to the folks there? It was very difficult, and I, I won't shy away from that question. I never will. It was one of the most difficult decisions of my life. Um, but just like I, you know, tell the players and, um, I've been taught, you know, I, you, you make a decision in life and you make it right. Uh, you make it right with your work ethic and your vision. Um, I do try to live my life with a no regret philosophy. Um, but I'm really proud of our time there. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, but this is the next, the next chapter. Um, my feet are firmly planted in Austin, Texas. Um, I think we put one of the best coaching staffs together in the country. Uh, recruiting is going well. Um, but I'm very proud of my time at Tech. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I think the success speaks for itself. Um, really proud that our assistant coach, Mark Adams, got a head coaching opportunity. So I think when the team wins, everybody uh, wins. Just very similar to when some of our great players leave early. Um, you know, you, you're sad and disappointed, but you're very, very happy that those guys are chasing their dreams. 
Texas head basketball coach Chris Beer joining us. You've mentioned recruiting a couple of times. I know how important that is. Like, you're in a good spot, and it's a dream come true, but you've already gone to work. You've hit the ground running both in terms of connecting with your current players and reaching out to guys in the transfer portal. What has the process been like? What has your message been? How pleased are you with the results so far? It's been crazy. You know, this portal is like the wild, wild west. It's, uh, I think college basketball has changed, obviously. Um, you know, you're in the portal, you're checking out players, you, you step outside to take a phone call, and then you come back in, there's 27 more players in the portal. So this thing's moving at, at lightning speed, and we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. Um, one of the really cool things, Jim, has just been getting to know our current players here. You know, it's kind of a unique spot, right? Like, we've competed against these guys so many times over the years. The respect's off the charts. And it's just been really cool getting to know these guys. We all share you know, some stories uh, from the battles we've had over the years. Um, but that's been, you know, I've had a few job transitions in my career, obviously. But this one's really unique in the fact that, you know, you're getting to know your players, but it's kind of like you already know them because you've been playing against them for so long. Yeah, that's got to be cool. Chris Beer joining us. So what about Andrew Jones? He announced that he's going to come back for another year. I had him on the show, Chris, back in January. I could not have been more impressed with him, his journey, his maturity. What's it mean to you to have him come back? Well, first of all, it's always been a big fan. You know, Andrew and I are from the same hometown. We both grew up in Irving, Texas, outside of Dallas. Um, one time years ago when we were playing those guys, I ran into him before the game and said, hey, man, how, how's it feel to be the second best player from Irving? <laughs> he, he, he looked at me like I was crazy. Right. Um, and then I guess somebody told him after the fact that I had played at Irving. Uh, obviously, he didn't know that, nor, nor did many other people either, Jim. Um, <laughs> but all these right. guys got great personalities. Um, so... The players here have been unbelievable, uh, the communication. We're working with each guy to make the best decision for their future. Um, you know, transferring is a part of college basketball. It's never been our objective to make guys stay or encourage guys to leave. It's always been our objective to get relationships with guys and make sure they make the best decision for them. Um, but we've got three guys on board, and um, it's, it's powerful. You know, like you never forget those first guys that, that jump on board with you. You never forget those first guys that trust you. Um, so I look forward to reminding these guys one day when we're on a ladder cutting a net down, like, hey, man, I'll never forget you guys jumping on board first. Thank you. Chris Beer joining us for a few more moments. You've always been a street dog. So what I'm curious is, I mean, when you've been where you've been, and you and I have talked about all the places you've been, you've got to be a street dog. And you've always been that street dog. And then you show up now in Texas where, man, everything is shiny. Everything is – I mean, you've got everything you need except for the results that you have to still go get. Are you still a street dog? I mean, does that mentality come with you to Austin, and is it going to be a street dog team? Absolutely, 1 million percent. That'll never change. And I think, um, you know, there's two, two ways to look um, at Texas. One, there's no doubt about it. This is a national brand. This is Texas. Um, you, don't, you don't come come coach or play at Texas unless you know what you're getting into. You have to have an edge. Uh, you have to understand – you know, the expectations, uh, and I do. That's why I'm coaching here. I'm excited. I wouldn't want it any other way. And now we're trying to find players that embrace that challenge too. So to me, um, you've got to be the toughest guy in the room. You've got to have that street dog mentality. You've got to have that edge, uh, or this stage will eat you up. Um, but what's exciting, and we're in the process of getting it done right now, when you get the guys that want to play under the big lights and you get the guys that want to play under these expectations, you know, that's when special can happen. Um, that's exactly what we're working really hard on trying to get done you know, sooner than later. And listen, I believe you, Chris, when you say that. Like, you have to know what the expectations are. But there's been a lot of guys who have come through that program, football, basketball, otherwise, who really thought they knew what the expectations were and got eaten alive. Now, I'm not saying that you don't know. I'm just saying people think they know, and then they get there, and it's not what it is. But then again, I would say a lot of coaches are upset that they feel like it's not fair to be based on what happens in March. Like, one 40-minute game in March should not define an entire season. You seem to look at it a different way, right? You're talking about the program being a Monday night program. It seems self-evident, but what do you mean by that, a Monday night program? Well, I think you got to dream big. You know, I, I tell the players, you know, my life philosophy is pretty simple. What do you want and what are you willing to do to get what you want? Um, and I know what I want. I want to coach NBA players. I want every player to graduate. I want to sell at every game, and I want to play on Monday nights, um, and I want to win that Monday night game. And I think I need to change what I want because I've been saying for years I want to play in that game. I got there, so now we're trying to win it. Um, and so when you get players that know what they want, you know, it's, it's like the difference between rec recruiting two players. I've recruited some players over the years. Hey, what do you want? I want to be great. 
goes, well, that sounds good. But then you recruit another player, and he goes, hey, look, I want to score 10 points a game as a freshman. I want to gain 15 pounds of muscle. I want to be a 42% three-point shooter. I want to get my degree in three years. I want to have $10 million in the bank by the time I'm 30. This is a different level of knowing what you want. And so that's what we're looking for at Texas, guys that know what they want. And then the second part, obviously more important, hey, what are you willing to do to get what you want? You know, at a young age, I said I want to coach on the biggest stage of college basketball, um, but I also was willing to do the things that it took to get here. Um, and that's the whole deal in recruiting to Texas, finding guys that, that know what they want and finding guys that are willing to do what it takes to get what they want. And so finally, those things, how did you do that? When you consider where you were not that long ago, you are now on the biggest stage. You knew what you wanted. What were you willing to do to get what you wanted? What were those things? You know, just do things other people aren't willing to do. You know, make sacrifices and, and uh, you know, and, and dedicate myself um, eliminate distractions and just always remember what's important. And in my business, Jim, it's really important. Uh, it's very easy. The players are what's most important. College basketball is all about the players. So today, you know, I've got 8 million things to do, but I will constantly get back to what's important, and that's the players. Our current players here in Texas and the guys that we're out there recruiting. Um, and so that's kind of been my philosophy over the years, and that's why we've had success, um, whether it be Little Rock, Angelo State, Texas Tech most recently. When you get really good players and everybody's on the same page uh, and you've got a culture where everybody understands the expectations and believes in the process, you know, special can happen. And that's what we're going to get done here at Texas. A lot of challenges. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to be easy, but nothing in life is easy that, that's worthwhile.